and welcome to yet another exciting episode of iBus. In today's episode, we will be having a back-to-back -back movie reviews. And first movie is Bo Burnham, Inside. It is a 2021 American special written, directed, film, edited, and starred by Bo Burnham. Recorded in the guest house of his home during the COVID-19 pandemic without a crew or audience, it was released on Netflix this year. To review the movie, we're joined by film critic Joel Alcoff. Joel, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So Joel, uh, writer Bo Burnham, cast Bo Burnham, direction by Bo Burnham, literally a one-man show depicting almost everyone's life during the pandemic lockdown. What is your analysis on Bo Burnham Inside? Yeah, I mean, it, I almost wish it was what everyone was going through on lockdown. <laughs> I wish I was that creative as a one-man show. Absolutely. Um, as you say, he, he wrote this, he directed this, he mm -hmm. edited this, he staged all of this. Um, and we know he has this caliber in him. Um, you know, he, he first went onto the scene doing mm -hmm. his YouTube uh, uh, funny music videos. And of course he did his directorial debut a few years ago mm -hmm. with eighth grade, um, which if you haven't seen, you really must. It's I think mm -hmm. essential viewing for any teenager. Um, but what he's managed to craft here is, is something that's both funny and existential um and he, he sort of I, I think i'm going to pull some of his lyrics he's trying to heal the world with comedy um and there's just so much unrest and anxiety that he manages to tap into that's happening at this time yeah. it's just it's going to reward repeat viewings there's just so much here to unpack yeah. and i think there's probably also so many interpretations and in how you want to analyze each yes. of yeah, um, his sets uh, and the songs individually as well. And I don't think any of those interpretations would be wrong, mm -hmm. um, but it's just really an amazing mm -hmm. special uh, piece of art. Absolutely. And Joel, it's truly amazing how the IMDb ratings went up to 8% and Rotten Tomato to 93%. Seems like, like everybody related themselves to Bo Burnham while watching this movie. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you, you know, it's... It's, it's funny, everyone is going through this in some mm -hmm. form or another. And what he managed to do with this really unique piece of art is he managed to tap into what everyone was feeling to mm -hmm. some degree. Um, and he doesn't pretend that everything is okay. And he doesn't pretend that everything is normal. Yeah. So, and that's the reality. So even if someone was watching it, who's in a great uh, state of mind, they're going to take something uh, something out of it completely differently mm -hmm. to someone who's really been struggling. And I think that's really reflected in these positive reviews and the way that it yeah. kept climbing up on IMDb and as you say, Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You see it once and you're going to take something from it and then you're going to watch it again and it resonates mm -hmm. with you differently and it stays Correct. with you. Um, and I think that's really the mark of a very creative piece of work mm -hmm. um, and something that uh, should really be applauded. Absolutely. And I was just watching it last night and I was thinking to myself that, I mean, up until now, it wasn't possible for me to think about a movie being, you know, made by one person in just one room. But Bo Burnham has, you know, absolutely nailed it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I really enjoyed some of the parts in this special mm. where you almost, he, he draws back the curtain and you can see yeah. inside of that. Um, you know, the, the times where he leaves the shot on there a lot longer and, and you can see him mm -hmm. playing with all the lights and the microphones yes. um, and you see him sort of uh, at the, his keyboard working out exactly which take he wants to use. Mm -hmm. And this is really a way of, as I say, drawing back the curtain and seeing what this creative process is. This really is a one man show. Uh, and, you know, what's amazing about it is how open he is and he sort of invites mm -hmm. the vulnerability from the audience. Yes. Um, and then we're sort of on this ride with him. Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's a really very special piece of work. Mm -hmm. And talking about the songs, which are of course hilarious, but thoughtful at the same time, it was so genius of Bo to create an entire movie as a musical number. What are your thoughts on his lyrics and the songs that, uh, you know, he presented in this, in this movie? Yeah, well, I, look, I'm always a fan of any musical, so mm -hmm. that's already a big tick, uh, box tick for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the songs he created managed to be both intimate and funny, but mm. dark. Um, to quite another one of his songs, you know, had a little bit of everything all of the time. And even the songs where you think might be quite shallow, such as, um, you know, White Woman on Instagram, yeah. it, 
there's something underlying there. Everything has its reason. Everything has a purpose there. There's nothing out of place. Everything is very direct, very purposeful. Um, and I think that aids that sort of connection he's trying to make. Um, and yeah, the the songs also being released separately that you can listen to uh, mm -hmm. on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. It gives you another impetus and, and a second win to each of those songs. And the ones that maybe you didn't uh, love the first time around, you start listening to, and the mm -hmm. lyrics seem to have more meaning each time. Mm -hmm. And we, look, as I said, we know that he's able to create these songs and it, it's mm. how he got his start in the business. And this is clearly a fantastic skill of his that he's honed in on, that he's grown. Um, and yeah, just really enjoyable, mm. funny, but also dark songs. And Absolutely. yeah, it's really Absolutely. a testament to him. And and the way he, he added expressions to those parts where he did not actually have anything to say, especially when he was uh, celebrating his 30th birthday. I would like you to comment on that part because it was hilarious and sad at the same time, him being all by himself on his 30th birthday, how he's celebrating and, you know, making it look funny and sad at the same time. So how would you comment on that? Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, it's sort of as I say, he's not pretending everything is normal yeah. uh, because it isn't. And that resonates with so many people this time because it, it's easy to be cynical and it's easy to say everything is terrible, the world is ending, but he's being empathetic in the way he's going about it. And that allows the comedy to shine through. It allows him to sit there and say like, this is awful, I'm turning 30, everything I thought was terrible, I'm I just, I was such a bad person. And, you know, he wants to grow and he wants to change. And But he's also kind of reluctant to because he understands his environment. Um, you know, it, obviously it's not an ideal way to celebrate a 30th birthday. It's a landmark birthday and um, I'll be turning 30 soon myself and it's not the way I want to be celebrating. <laughs> but at the same time, what he's able to achieve there mm -hmm. by that vulnerability, um, we can see him mm -hmm. and we're able to connect with him. And I mean, in a funny way, what an amazing way to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Right. I would like you to comment on how Bo Burnham's insight captures the comedic brilliance of a millennial going through an existential crisis. I mean, you just uh, told about yourself that you're turning 30. We were, we were all going through some sort of, you know, exi ex existential crisis. But the way he has, you know, presented the idea in his movie, how would you comment on that? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, everyone thinks they're going through existential crises all the time. Um, and someone who's older will look back on a millennial and say, yeah. you think you're going through an existential crisis, you have no idea. But you know, that the reality is that people are. Um, and we're starting to question everything and mm -hmm. being isolated and being alone, we're inviting those questions onto ourselves. And the way he's doing it, it it's a little bit sinister and self-loathing. Um, but because he brings in that comedy, he brings in that inviting layer, you know, it, you're able to ask those questions, but from a good place. And I think that's what's really important. And mm. that's what he's trying to put across is that he's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Mm. You're allowed to have these questions. You're allowed to be having these existential mm. thoughts. But what are you doing about it? How are you going about approaching these questions of your life and yourself? Um, and I think that's something he's been able to achieve. And why there's so much to analyze in this really unique piece, um, because everyone's going to go about it differently, but he's yeah. inviting us to do that with yeah. spoof comedy. It, it, it's such a bizarre concept that it's almost difficult to grasp, but that you just have to see for yourself to mm. um, really appreciate. Right. And Joel, with a very basic editing and lights, Bo Burnham managed to create an entire 1.5 hour movie that is based on comedy and int introspection. And by making it to Netflix, do you think there are more chances for such simpler stories and characters to make it to Netflix? Yeah, well, it's really interesting. Um, and we know there are other artists sort of trying to replicate the formula um, of honing in on what we're going through. I mean, I know there's um, America's Mark Duplass is uh, starring and wrote and directed, I think, as well, um, Language Lessons, mm -hmm. which is also it's a, a romantic comedy uh, between two people doing uh, Zoom lessons. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and there are many like that. So there are people trying to make the most of mm -hmm. this situation. 
uh, which is commendable. You have some people also who want to kind of ignore it and not talk about it and they're trying to use their art as a way of mm -hmm. escaping, which is equally commendable. There are two ways of really going about this. Um, and going back to what you're saying, with Netflix, they have a way of really allowing complete creative freedom to their artists. We've seen it being done terribly, mm -hmm. uh, in all honesty, and I won't go naming them. Okay. But what we're also being able to see is that creative freedom, um, you're able to harness something, mm -hmm. you're able to make something special. Now, obviously, it takes someone special like Bo Burnham to create mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. But, it, it, you know, I'm excited to see if Netflix are able to mm -hmm. um, grasp this. And more importantly, if there are other artists who are inspired by it, mm -hmm. that would be an amazing thing to see. Joel, it was wonderful reviewing this movie with you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That was Joel Kalkoff reviewing with us the latest release, Bo Burnham Inside. And we will be taking a short break here. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In this segment, we will review the movie, The Career, the true story of a, of a British businessman recruited into one of the greatest international conflicts in history. To review the movie, we're joined by film critic, Mike Shaker. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me, Masih. So Mike, apart from the bankable Mission Impossible films, it has been some time since Hollywood has delivered a top shelf espionage thriller. Upstep Sherlock Holmes uh, himself, Benedict Cumberbatch, to take up that challenge. What are your initial thoughts? Well, uh, the initial thought, of course, being that it would be unfair to compare this film uh, to a Mission Impossible, although it's just mm -hmm. as thrilling, but far more realistic, far mm -hmm. more grounded in reality in terms of the historical facts. Mm -hmm. I think what, what really struck me about the Korea is how significant that particular story is mm -hmm. to not just uh, Cold War history, but to world history. I mean, yes. it really leads up to the whole, you know, the, the nuclear war between the two superpowers. And there is this man, an insignificant sort of man, if you might want to call him that, a salesman as it were, uh, becoming the courier boy uh, in mm -hmm. a sense, but actually averting what could have been, a, a, you know, a crisis of nature that could have destroyed the planet, you know. Um, and he, of course, did not know about the reach and the scale of the operation that he was part of. And then for him to make, you know, connect with a KGB agent uh, down in Moscow, mm. risking his own life. The fact that it's a true story is really what moved me most about the courier, uh, which of course, you know, sets it apart from a lot of other mm. spy thrillers, the kinds of James Bond and MI uh, films that we watch, uh, which, you know, which you watch more for the extravagance of, of mm. it than the historical significance per se. Right. And perhaps the most important aspect of the story of the career is its tribute to the real life characters and the celebration of the fact that a great human being will risk his life to save others. How would you comment on that? Absolutely. I mean, the person, uh, the agent on the side of USSR at the time, hmm. Oleg uh, Penkovsky, if I'm getting his name right. I mean, here is a man who was able to think beyond uh, his job, but see himself as part of humanity mm -hmm. at large and to save lives of humans rather than always see it in terms of nation states and mm -hmm. covert operations and spies that they're supposed to be. I think, uh, you know, that's that's the service to humanity, I think, that needs to be lauded far more. And I think that's what this film tends to mm -hmm. do. Um, as much from, from the Russian side as, of course, from the English side, and that's really what the story is. It's called The Courier for a reason, mm -hmm. because that's Benedict Cumberbatch for you playing the lead part. But I think uh, the person who's on the other end is mm -hmm. also playing the lead part of this film and a very important part in saving, in saving this planet, actually. Mm -hmm. Right, and Mike, I would like to know your thoughts on the screenwriting that allows for little room for emotional depth between Cumberbatch and Buckley's characters. What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with this or do yeah, you have I mean, like something else to say about it? It is a, it is a strange sort of relationship, mm -hmm. isn't it? A complete commoner, as it were, mm -hmm. 
for lack of a better word, a salesperson who's dealing with a very high level uh, spy or, or an agent, a secret mm. service agent who's actually double crossing. So he's also doing something where the other person might lose their job, but you know, they have mm. a larger or higher calling uh, to do that. Whereas this person is just, he just does business and he's been picked mm. up by CIA and, and MI, uh, MI6 to do this for them. And that relationship, which is actually boils down to a very human relationship by the end of it mm -hmm. in a way that they're close but they're really not close they they care for each other but they really don't care for each other you know they they have the same mm -hmm. uh, mission in mind but they really don't have the same mission in mind i think that that gray zone of the mm -hmm. of the two characters that they inhabit uh, in respect to each other makes this a phenomenal film also about mm -hmm. relationships uh, and the depth or the lack of depth as it were. But I think it's a very compelling uh, relationship. Uh, yeah. Also towards the end, when you see that develops into a, a, a stronger human bond than just the mission that they're, uh, that they're at that point in time engaged with. Uh, it's and, and I think it's done so well, not just in terms of the performances, but I think the performances really flow from, from the writing of this film. And uh, you know, here uh, you have to, but of course, Credit uh, the director, mm -hmm. who's not a hugely well-known director in his uh, in, in his own right, but an extremely popular, uh, well-regarded theatre director uh, from England. That's Dominic uh, Cook, who mm. uh, you know, who's, who's helped this film phenomenally well. Yes, and speaking of uh, the director Dominic Cook, he has wisely played to his superstar strength using a storytelling style reminiscent of old-school uh, spy thrillers and relying more on intense performances and unexpected twists rather than you know choreographed action or stylish shots to wave his plot uh, to, to, to weave his plot uh, how would you comment on that absolutely I think because the writing is so strong and from the writing emerges performances mm -hmm. that are so, so strong mm -hmm. the conflict is so easy to understand um, and the drama is so out there in yeah. every scene uh, it's a compelling drama so you don't need you don't need the razzmatazz you don't need to blow things up you don't need to like you know uh, have uh, you know buildings falling uh, to hold your attention I think uh, these two actors and the director along with the writing team managed to make this an absolutely uh, riveting historical uh, spy thriller because it has relevance from a, from a history point of view but it also has a huge relevance from a drama point of view from the from the dramatic angle it's just you can't take your eyes off at all uh, when you're watching the Korea. right and uh, my ink we all have read about the cuban missile crisis and have knowledge and seen a number of movies about it too some even you know describing it as a conspiracy but just to know what was happening inside the layer of outer world is too amazing uh, what are your thoughts on that Exactly. I think one of the things that films tend to do is take you into worlds that you will not be able to travel to otherwise, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. those could be worlds that are not real, those could be worlds that are pure fantasies, but those could also be worlds that you sort of have a clue about, but how would it play out if you're really, if you, mm -hmm. as an audience, if you were a fly on the wall? And I think, you know, the conversations that even heads of states have or, or the top league spies do, mm -hmm. or, or even citizens in Moscow who were supposed to be the eyes and ears of the state and how you're being followed. I mean, that's just pure Cold War retelling in a way that I hadn't seen for a very long time. Of course, as, as a genre, it already exists. As spy thrillers from the time, there have been one too many, uh, not just films, but books as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a legend genre, but I think to be able to get into that space again and again to engage you becomes even harder still. Mm. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm in terms of drawing you in uh, of course uh, I have to again, you know, we, I don't think we've spoken enough about Benedict Cumberbatch and, mm -hmm. and you know, there is a tendency in the Oscars, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to have a bias towards biopics in general when you're looking out for best mm -hmm. performances for, uh, for, you know, or best actor Oscar. Uh, mm -hmm. There is always a slight bias, uh, I know where it comes from, with, with subjects that are slightly British by nature if you look at yeah. the best actor uh, winners over the past few years. So uh, here is a one film that I'm pretty sure uh, is going to fetch him uh, a Best Actor Oscar nomination mm -hmm. uh, in 2000, uh, 
21 or uh, 22 actually mm. the film actually came out in 2020 at the Sundance mm. Film Festival but of course there was the whole you know pandemic mm. thereafter so eventually it actually hit theaters in in 2021 mm. so it's a it's a new film it's now uh, mm. in in the OTT platforms for everyone to view but I'm willing to wager a bet that this mm. is going to fetch him an Oscar nomination. Right, right. Uh, Maya, we're, we're living in times where even authentic books and stories have been, you know, uh, changed a lot when they're turned into movies. But this, however, is, you know, it, it, it's a true story. It's a true event. But it was neatly put together, not overly dramatized, and, you know, so came across as authentic. I would really want you to, uh, you know, comment upon the authenticity, the way it was portrayed in the movie. Um, do you think it was justified? Uh, yes, I do. I think uh, the word is authenticity for this kind of film mm -hmm. because there aren't too many distractions by way of cinema per se. And so you have to thereafter bring me into that world by making me believe that all these things really actually took mm -hmm. place. And that authenticity comes from a production design in mm -hmm. terms of the way you show uh, you know, London to be at the time, the way you show Moscow to be at the time, the way you do the interiors of a film like this, where you, you do believe mm -hmm. that you've gone back in time uh, in, a, in a real sense. Uh, it comes from facts, but they, they, they seem uh, believable. Uh, and you know, they do. Um, the fact that we do know that this person actually existed and existed uh, until not too long ago, uh, you know, uh, the, the main character of mm -hmm. the courier, uh, uh, for lack of a, a way to call him by any other name, uh, mm -hmm. in respect to this film, uh, he was around and he was actually someone who was rescued mm -hmm. from a, a Russian jail uh, yeah. in, in a deal that took place between, between USSR and England where they swapped a, a person, you know, a spy each from their, from their mm -hmm. respective jails. Uh, but of course, I think your heart really goes out to all like, the other main characters who mm -hmm. actually lost his life. Uh, while in, yeah. in terms of uh, actual parlance and governance, he was, he was being a traitor. But in terms mm -hmm. of the world, he was genuinely saving humanity. Now, of course, there are people who might know better in terms of how, how real is it. It's mm -hmm. impossible for, for, for someone like me to actually go in. I mean, I've never been a spy and certainly mm -hmm. not been, mm -hmm. a, you know, I have no clue about what it was right. like to be in USSR or England at the time. But mm -hmm. I think that's not as important as the fact that you believe it. And so long as you as an audience believe the story, mm -hmm. I think it's done its job. Right, Mayank, it was so much fun reviewing this movie with you. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thank you, Nasim. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. So that was Mayank Shaker reviewing the career. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care and goodbye. Mm -hmm.